Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is, is it a tree and it is a medium level problem. So basically, we have been given an undirected graph and which has n nodes and m edges. We have to return true or 1 if the given input is a tree, otherwise we have to return 0. So tree is nothing, just a special form of a graph and just having some constraints. So let us first understand what is a tree and then we will have a look at this question. So uh, conditions for a graph to become a tree, right. So what is a graph? First of all, graph is nothing. We, we, we have some nodes and we have some edges connecting those nodes. That is just basically called a graph. Now a graph can be a tree if it follows these conditions. There are exactly n minus 1 edges where n is the number of nodes and there is exactly one possible path from each node to any other node, right. So there should not be multiple paths and by multiple paths, I al also can take care of that particular statement. We normally say that a tree cannot have cycles, right. A tree cannot have cycles, but a better way to say it is that there should be exactly one possible path from each node to any other node. Because whenever there will be a cycle, there will be more than one path. So let's say this is A, B and C. One path from A to C is this one and the second path from A to C is from here and then here. Whenever there is a cycle, there will be multiple paths. So in order to uh, avoid saying this, we can have uh, cycles. We can also say that uh, there, there should not be multiple paths from any node to every other node, right. Once these conditions are established, we want to figure out whether our current input follows these conditions, right. Now there will be a couple of challenges with this particular uh, thing. You see that uh, first of all, we can make a check on the base of the number of edges. So if initially m is not equals to n minus 1, we can just directly return 0 without even checking anything because we know that if the edges is not equals to this, that means the given input can never be a tree, right. The second thing that we can try to find out is cycles, right. So it is easy to find cycles in an undirected graph, but I will tell you what the challenge is. Let us say the given input is something like this, right. So let me just draw it like this. So basically the graph has been divided into two connected components. If we try to count the number of edges, that is 1, 2 and 3, 4 and 5. The number of edges is 5, the number of nodes is 6. Right. So the first condition is satisfied, right, and our code will pass from here. Now, it depends from which connected component we start our journey from. If we start from this particular connected component, then obviously we will be able to find the cycle and then we will return 0. But if we start from this particular connected component, there is no cycle here. Our code is going to return true or 1 in this particular case because it will never reach here, right. So the second thing that we will have to take care of is, I am including it in one of the conditions. There should be, should be exactly one connected component, right. So this will be the third condition that we need to check and I have given you an example, why do we need to check it like this. Now the question is, how do we find cycles in an undirected graph? We know how to count the number of character components. It is very simple. We will discuss it in a while as well. But let us now see how we can find cycles. So our task is to finding cycles, right. This is our task currently. So in an undirected graph, finding cycles is quite simple. What we do is, let us say our node is something like this. So let us say we have here, then here, then here, right. So let us say this is node 1, 2 and 3 and 4, right. Now, since this is an undirected graph, there will be an edge from 1 to 2 and 2 to 1, right. Normally, what we say is, we are traversing in a loop, right. Whenever we are traversing in a loop, as soon as we reach a node which is already visited, that means we have found a cycle. But you have to be a little careful by assuming this particular statement in an undirected graph. So normally, how would you find a cycle? you would see whether a node which I am trying to visit now has already been visited or not. If it has already been visited, that means this is a cycle. So let us try to do the same thing from here. Starting from 1, we go to node 2, right. 
So as soon as we go to node 2, we will try to figure out all the neighbors of node 2. One of the neighbors of node 2 can also be node 1, right? So let's say, let's take this particular example where there are only two nodes, right? So starting from 1, 2 is unvisited and 1 is now visited. So this is now visited, right? Now I come to 2 and one of the neighbors of 2 is 1 itself. I see that it is already visited. 1 is already visited and I have an edge from 2 to 1. But does that mean this is a cycle? That is clearly not the case. So that means while checking for a node which is already visited, we should also check that it is not the direct parent of the current node. So what is going to be the parent? The node from which I just came from. Right. Similarly, in this particular case, the parent of 1, let's say, is minus 1 because we are starting from D our DFS from 1. Right. Now, when we come to 2, our parent is going to be 1. Right. Now, I am looking for a node which is already visited, visited and is not the parent. So, let me just write the condition. So, I am looking for a node which is already visited and is not the parent of the current node, right? So, for node 2, 1 is already visited, but the sad part is that it is also the parent. So, we cannot consider this particular thing as a cycle, right? So, now let's say from 2, we move on to 3. For 3, the parent is going to be 2. From 3, we move on to 4, the parent for 4 is going to be 3. Now, I explore all the neighbors of 4. So, one of the neighbors of 4 is going to be 3, right? But it is the parent, so we ignore this particular neighbor. Now, the next neighbor for 4 is going to be 2 and it is not the parent of the current node. That basically means we have been successfully able to find the cycle, right? So, this is how you check a cycle in an undirected graph. Now, we are going to apply the same thing in our code and let us uh, have a look at the final code. So, now you can see the very first condition that I had was while if m is not equal to n minus 1, I can just directly return 0 from here. Now, I have created a visited vector and I have created a graph adjacency list. Now, the input was essentially given like this a d j. This was the input that was in the default code, but they are not giving you an adjacency list. We have to be careful. They are only giving us an edge list, right? So, the very first time I do is I convert this edge list into an undirected adjacency list, right? So, from A to B, I add an edge and from B to A, I add an edge. Now, I have initialized my answer with 1 here and my uh, connected component count with 0. Now, I am just going through all the nodes and if my current node is not visited, my answer is going to be answer and DFS of whatever this thing returns, right? So, if there is no cycle, this code is going to return me uh, 1. Otherwise, if this code is going to return me false, that means it has a cycle. Now, if it returns false and even one of the current component returns false, my and is going to make my whole answer false, right? And since I'm encountering a new connected component, I'm just going to increment this particular counter. Inside my DFS, I just initialize my local answer with 1 and my visited of node with 1 as well. That means this particular node has been visited now. Now, I'm just going through all the children of the current node. If the child is not visited, I just uh, make a DFS call to that particular child and now you can see the parent of that particular child will now become the current node, right? This is how you maintain the parent-child relationship. And again, I am taking the logical and of both of these values. Otherwise, if this child is visited and this child is not equal to my current parent, that means we have found a cycle and I can just directly return 0 from here. Otherwise, after all the things have been done, I am just going to return my answer. So, at the end, the answer value should be true, indicating that there are no cycles and the value of connected components should be equals to 1, indicating that there is only one connected component. If both of the conditions are true together, that means the given input is a tree, right? So, let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So, you see this passes all the test cases and the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So, that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye bye.